We are in the passage of 1st John chapter 2 verses 18 to 23. So, I invite everyone to please uh, read with me. Verses 18 to 23. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. They went from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you allow her knowledge. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, this is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father, whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. I invite everyone to please bow our heads and join me in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for this great message that you prepared for us. We know everybody has a different situation right now. We, maybe sometimes, maybe some has their own trials and challenges, but no, Lord, I know that you will work in us. Lord, may we invite your holy presence that you will speak in front of us. Use me as your vessel. And may we glorify you in this message. May we just magnify your name. And Lord, we will just leave everything to you. Be with us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So today, uh, the title of our God's message is Deceptions of the Last Hour. Deceptions of the Last Hour. So by way of introduction, I remember when our mother church, Lori Mi in Riyadh, JSA, way back 2011, they organized a study about eschatology, the study of the end times. So this study is open to all, not just for pastors, not for elders, but for all church members who are willing to know about eschatology. So I am blessed to be part of that study. And part of that study is we watch a special documentary titled 666 Israel from the makers of hell Israel. So in that documentary, as a newcomer, it is my first time to hear the words end times. Rapture, tribulation, judgment, and antichrist. According to that scriptural-based documentary, there will be a powerful and horrible Antichrist to come who will rule a one-world government that will control the commercials, the buying and selling of all goods. There will be implanting of biochips from everyone's body, and you cannot buy without this chip. Since this is the prerequisite of buying, Implanting of this chip in your body is the only way for you to avail. And that is really a very horrifying night, hearing and knowing that possibility. So this is not a Christian fiction, but a possibility in years to come. But when? Only God knows. So what comes to your mind when you hear the word Antichrist? It is a term that has become very familiar to Christians in many generations. Today might be the first time we talk about the Antichrist. But through the years, our pastors and elders 
directly talking about the enemy of God. But the precise about who are the Antichrist is something new. And in today's message of the Lord, we will see by our very eyes and hear by our very ears who really they are. So in their sermon, we will see and know closely what God wants us to know as he revealed this message to Apostle John and to us. So may I remind everyone, what we will hear today is not to discourage everybody or to expose who are the false Christians, but it is God's intention to affirm our faith. John is affirming and assuring the believers' faith during that time that they are true Christians. And it is the same message as well for us today. John is encouraging the believers that time to be steadfast and firm in their faith because what they have is the truth. So while we are unpacking each character, be blessed that we are part of these remain children. Be blessed because we are part of the body of Christ who stayed. And we will pray to God that everybody will continue in the faith until the Lord comes back. So that we persons we will uncover today, or kind of person if you will, are first, the Antichrist, and the Antichrist, the singular and the plural. We can find it in verse 18, verse 22, and verse 23. Second is the apostates in verse 19. And the last point, point number three, is the anointed in verse 20 and in verse 21. So our message, our God's message will just uh, roll in these three points. The Antichrist, the apostates, and the anointed. Beginning in the Antichrist, point number one. So there is, we can find in verse 18, 22 and 23, there is word Antichrist singular and the Antichrist plural. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist. He who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Now here, John begins with the word children. Beginning in verse 18, we can see in red font children. He is not necessarily talking to the kids or teenagers. Though he might be the oldest person in their group that time, approximately around in his 90s, but this word children is a term of endearment. When you say endearment, it is a word of compliment. So John affirmed that they are born again and adopted in the kingdom of God. So how could we prove that they are born again and adopted in the kingdom of God. And we could see that in the following verses, such as from the phrases, not of us. Having the word us means their spirit is in harmony, and they are in unity with regards to their faith. The word us refers also of having in common, and that is their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Another phrases we can read there are, but you have been anointed and you know the truth. That only means, that only proves that these children are the people of God who are continuing their walk with God. Second word, we can find it, it is the last hour. Now, the phrase, the last hour was repeated twice. At the beginning and the end of verse 18, the color blue, if you can find it there. Now, please look at your watches or your wall clocks in your houses. The last hour here is not one hour before the current hour. 
Let's say now it's 11 o'clock. So it doesn't mean John, he's not referring that this is the 10 o'clock. So when he wrote this letter, or when he inserted this letter, during that time, let's say it's 11 o'clock in the morning, he is referring, he is not referring that this is 10 o'clock, one hour prior to the current time. Or it is not the 12 midnight, which is the last hour of a 24 hours day. So what does this mean, the last hour? John is not talking about the end of the age. If you notice, it is in present tense. It is. Moreover, they are in the first century. And John is saying that it is the last hour. So this refers to the last period in redemptive history. The period between first and second coming of Jesus Christ. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that we are in the last hour for 2,000 years now? Since in the Old Testament, Prophet Joel already prophesied that this last hour will happen. And it was, it was fulfilled during the day of Pentecost. However, the, pra the phrases or the phrase used there was the last days. But if you observe in the Bible consistently, these last days... These last hours have consistently the same meaning when you study the context. Acts 2.17, he said, this is uh, Peter who uh, quoted from Prophet Joel. And in the last days, it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit in all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dreams, shall dream, dream dreams. So imagine Peter exalted this during the time of Pentecost, and still today this is happening. So they are in the last hour, and we are in the last hour. And only God knows when until last hour will it be. It could be extended again for another 10 years. It could be another 20 years or 100 years or another 1,000 years. We don't know. Only God knows. It is the entirety of the present age. So the end and the maximum limit of this last hour is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we can know it is the last hour because of the increase in number of antichrists. It is not the last hour until you have antichrist. It is not the last hour until you have opposition to Christ. It is not the last hour until you have false pretenders to be Christ. We have read and we have heard the words antichrist. You can find it in the first Verse chapter 18, the singular, and Antichrist, the second one, which is plural. Now, we will try to explain it further. The word Antichrist, which is singular, is well known to us. But did you know that the word Antichrist occurs only in John's letters? We can find it only in this section two times. 2 John verse 18 and 22. 1 John 4, 3 and 2 John 1, 7. Though it is limited as a term to John's epistles, it expresses a widely known reality that is distributed within other portions of the Bible, not only in the New Testament, but even in the Old Testament as well. The term Antichrist which John used is Antichristos in the Greek. Christos obviously means the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Anti can have two possible meanings. It is a Greek prefix that can mean either against or in the place of. Antichrist can then mean either someone who is against Christ or someone who seeks to replace Christ. 
someone who is an enemy of Christ or someone who is a false representation of Christ. Anyone in opposition to Christ and anyone who offers himself as a false replacement to Christ fits the term. Now, this is a very important to identify. John said in, in verse 18 that the Antichrist, who is singular, is coming. He is coming, but he is not yet here. Take note. The Antichrist is coming, but he is not yet here. He is the devilish figure, powerful, anti-God, who is the last and greatest enemy that the gospel will ever know. He is the same being described and explained in the book of Daniel, 2 Thessalonians, and book of Revelation. He is the son of destruction in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. He is the lawless one in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. He is the prince to come in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. And he is the beast of the sea in Revelation 3. But again, he is not yet here, but for sure he will come. But what is the point of John? He is saying this Antichrist, the singular, is coming. So now many Antichrists, which is the plural, have come. Church, brothers and sisters, the emphasis is we don't have to wait for the first, for this final one, Antichrist, to come. But we have to be alarmed and vigilant to the Antichrist, which is plural, who are with us right now and long before. They are not just Antichrist, but they are even many. Look at verse 18. They are many Antichrists. They are in fact everywhere. Please check the persons beside you. Don't smile at them because they are not the ones. They might be in your homes, in your workplaces, in your neighborhood. Maybe some of your closest friends. And the saddest reality is it could possibly be one of your loved ones, of our loved ones. Then how can we identify them? Go down in verse 22. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. So this Antichrist denied that Jesus is the Christ. They deny the nature. They deny the identity. And they deny the work of Jesus Christ. This is clearly an Antichrist standpoint. So since the Lord Jesus is the truth, and everything to be said about him is true, everything opposite to his nature, to his words and works are lies. These Antichrist are people who speak lies concerning Christ. Any person who is against Christ, any person who attacks the deity of Jesus Christ, any person who is hostile to the true nature of Christ, to the true work of Christ, is possessing the spirit of Antichrist. Any person who offers himself as the true Christ, the true representative of God against Christ, calling attention to himself as if he were the true Christ and Christ is not, is the spirit of Antichrist. There are a lot of people now all over the world manifesting this spirit. And they are very vocal and bold, confessing that he is the Messiah and the anointed one. And this is a spirit of Antichrist. First John chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, 
for many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. To John, this was simply another way to describe an unbeliever. They don't have to be false prophets. They don't have to be false messiahs. They don't have to be false teachers. All that is required to possess the spirit of Antichrist is to be against Christ. To make it very simple, Jesus said in Matthew 12, 30, He who is not with me is against me. Ang hindi panig sa akin ay laban sa akin. At ang hindi ko kasamang mag-ipon ay nagkakalat. And there is no in-between. There is no neutral. He is either with him or he is against him. He is either a Christian or an Antichrist. And if someone has an Antichrist spirit, the rest of the verse says, he is denying the Father and the Son. He had just denied God and his Son because Jesus the Messiah is the Son of God. The Father and the Son is one. So it's very plain. It's very clear. It's a crystal clear. Who are these Antichrist? And we can find it more in our second point. Who is or who are the apostates? Now in verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. Now, the term apostasy, as we use it today, comes from the Greek word apostasia, which means departure, revolt, or rebellion. In terms of religion, apostasy is the abandonment of or a willful falling away from the faith. It can be defined as the departure of religious practices, a rejection of beliefs once agreed upon, or even mockery of the religion. Now, apostasy is different from backsliding. Backsliding is not included in our discussion today, but I will just give you some information just to imagine and visualize the difference. This is just one of the many. Backsliding is failure in testimony and practical Christian living, resulting in a believer walking in a way dishonoring to the Lord. For such, sad, it is to be backslide. There is a road open to restoration by true repentance and confession. We can read it in Hosea chapter 14, verse 4. I will hear their backsliding. I will love them freely. Now, apostasy, on the other hand, is far more serious. For that there is no road to recovery and restoration. An apostate is doomed to be bound forever in his sin, both in this world and in the next. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 to 6 says, For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of God, and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away, 
to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. Going out from a sound church and going into another sound church is not becoming as an apostate. Someone transferred because it might be because of his or her new house location. It might be because his or her new workplace, he was transferred there or other valid reasons. But it doesn't affect his or her faithful relationship with the Lord. It doesn't make someone an antichrist or an apostate. But when someone go out from a sound church and went to a cult, and that is different. That is a very serious issue. Meaning, he or she has a serious theological problem. Now, in verse 19, it started from the pronoun they. They there refers to the Antichrist in verse 18. And because they are really good, they are so presentable, they are so smart enough, they, are, they have this, this human knowledge, they have this charisma, their ability to socialize is outstanding, and they were given an opportunity to use the pulpit to express their platforms. And once they defected the people, their fellowship, their mindset, their priorities, and later on, leave the church because it is mission accomplished. And this is what happening since in the early churches. But according to, according to John, they are not of us because they have different theology. They have different doctrines. They are very deceiving. They don't have the same gospel. They don't have the same faith. It is just simply they use the church as their platform, but in due time, they will reveal their true colors. And they are not really of us. And explained by the next verse, by the preposition for. You can see here, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. They did not continue and they did not stay firm because they have different spirit. And that spirit is not from God. It is impossible for a true believer to lose his or her salvation. The true believer will persevere in his pursuit of holiness and will persevere in his walk of obedience to the Lord and will persevere in following Christ. If we are a true believer, they will know us by our fruits. And there is an evidence of a changed life. And that changed life is marked by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Our obedience and love for God and for others. And if we are really believers, church, we are supposed to continue in our pursuit of Christ's holiness. The Bible is so consistent that a true Christian will continue to persevere even in tough times such as persecutions. And those who, 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 will, fail, who will fall away prove only that they are not sincere and they are not true to their commitment to God. To begin with, they are not really saved. Because if someone is saved, according to verse 19b, they would have continued with us. We never know who are they until we witness on that day how this person or group of people turn their backs to God. And I just realized that this tissue defect is real. God allowed people to come in the church and do their compromising as a believer could know. 
and discouraging other people. Their focus is not in God, but instead, they were swayed by other disturbances. Their emotions and their pride. And they depart because, as John said, they are actually not of us. True Christians don't do that, brothers and sisters. You know what abide in him means? You will remain. You can fill the church with a lot of false prophets. You can fill the church with false teachers. But they cannot draw true believers away because true believers remain. They will abide and they will stay. And that's why in verse 19, he says, if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. Now, the third point, the anointed. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Now, the word anointed here refers to the Christians, the true believers, those who remained, those who continued. Those who persevere in their pursuit of holiness. These anointed are the little children John is addressing to in verse 18, remember? The word anointing refers to an anointing oil, which is charisma in Greek. And this Greek charisma was used only twice in the New Testament. In this verse 20 and in verse 27. And it's really a word for ointment. And that ointment is the Holy Spirit. The anointing is the ministering of the Holy Spirit who dwells in every true believer. The Holy Spirit is working in us by ministering in us so that we can understand all things. The Holy Spirit is giving us the illumination to understand every doctrines and to whatever behind every single words of Him. This anointing serves as our soul's immune system that protects and guards us in every doctrines, in every teachings, ideologies, that enters in our hearts and minds. John is telling these children and to all true believers until today, including us, including you, who are listening, that we have this anointing residing in us to discern and sort out what is true and what is false. Believers, may not be as learned as others. We may not be have the born human intelligence. But we have this super anointing that teaches all, all, all things. Remember these first disciples? They are not learned men. Most of them are fishermen. But they spoke with power and authority because they have this anointing from the Holy Spirit. Have you noticed, church? Because we have this Holy Spirit residing in us, who is holy, who is pure, who is perfect, who is blameless. So whenever we encounter something opposite to His nature, He reacts because He is not comfortable. It is the invisible presence of the Anointed One who is the Lord Jesus Christ in every true believer. So John is encouraging these children and us today that we have to be confident because we have the anointing of the most powerful 
and the most sovereign one. Don't be intimidated. Don't feel inadequate. We are not second class and we are not beneath by this Antichrist. And this Holy Spirit is available immediately to you. It is not after a year you're born again. Or like there is a probationary period that you will receive this after six months. Or in six months, it will expire. No, brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit is available and ready at all times. It is not like vaccines, which is good only for six and 12 months. The Holy Spirit is with us and will be forever. John 14, 6, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. John 14, 26, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring to your remembrance and all that I have said to you. You will know all things, brothers and sisters, just necessary for our salvation. There is a small voice within us that whispering that what is the right thing to do. Have you experienced that, brothers and sisters? It is like there is one within us who is pulling you and telling you not to do it or how is the proper way to do it. John 16, 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Brothers and sisters, no teacher will surpass the knowledge brings by the Holy Spirit. John is, reiterate, John is reiterating here to them and to us that because they have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it is enough for them to understand everything. Human teacher and human mind is fallible which are capable to commit mistakes and errors. But what we have is perfect and holy. That is why in every decision makings we are to make, we are asking the Holy Spirit for Him to guide us so as we will not commit mistakes. And whatever the Holy Spirit decides, for sure, it is perfect. So you have the scripture, we have the scripture. You have what is revealed, we have what is revealed. And you have the Holy Spirit. And so you have and everything that is necessary. You may not know everything about the scripture. You may not know everything about theology. But to know what is necessary for salvation. I'm sure, brothers and sisters, church, you know it. And now, brothers and sisters, it is very plain. It is very simple. And we can see and we can evaluate ourselves right now what we are. Are we in this type of antichrist? Hopefully not. Are we in this stage of apostatizing, hopefully we are not. And are we, are those anointed by the Holy Spirit? And hopefully we are in this category. We are in this type of person that there is Holy Spirit dwells in us. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, Hearing all of this is not our intention to condemn these people, especially our friends, our colleagues, our families, 
and our brothers and sisters who are once with us in the ministry and in the service for God. Indeed, this message of God is really a reality check for everybody. This is a very sad reality, knowing some of our close friends, ex-brethren in Christ, are actually anti-Christ as described by John. I did not say that, mga kapatid, but it is very clear. It is crystal clear. We can mirror it through the scripture. But at the same time, an encouragement to the remaining ones, to all of you who remain, to all of you who are listening right now, to persevere and continue in the faith. Not for the sake of being in the church, or staying here in the church just to show people that we are really Christians because at the end of the day, even we are trying our best to remain here, if we are not the genuine ones, we cannot stay for long. If our color is actually anti-Christ, we may be continuous and stay for such a very long period of time, but we cannot stay for life. A time will come that we will just give up and depart from the fellowship. Now, the question would be at this moment of time, are we aware if we are a true Christian or not? We can answer that personally, brothers and sisters. But one thing we can share of, for us to maintain and remain in the faith, we need extra initiative to seek God. We need His presence and obey in His words. We are not disregarding the power of prayer, but we cannot just pray to God and ask His guidance. Of course, that is, it is given to God, but it requires our part. That is why, mga kapatid, many people cannot hold on to their faith in Jesus because most of the time we are the Lord of our own selves. If we don't want to pray, we will not pray. If we don't like to listen and attend in the church, we choose not to attend. If we are asked to be part in the ministry, we reason out. Not everyone who claims to be a Christ follower is actually a Christ follower. And we can find it much seven. Those people, they choose or they chose on that broad road. We can know if we are Christians, if we will continue in the faith, having fruit of the Holy Spirit. So it is not just staying and remaining in the church, but there should be a manifestation of a transformed life. And it is not enough having the fruit of the Spirit only and not continuing in the faith. That fruit surely is, is, is a false fruit. Faith and fruit should progress hand in hand, mga kapatid. And John wants his readers, including us, to be able to discern and identify who are the true Christians, who are the true Antichrist, and who are the true apostates. God is filtering us. Kung baga, ang sabi nga niya, hinihiwalay ang mga kamping sa tupa at ang mga damo sa trigo. So mga kapatid, this is my challenge for everybody. How do you tell when somebody really belongs to Christ? Simple. If they continue. If you continue in my word, you are my real disciple. Again, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14, we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning to the end. 
if there is perseverance. Now, mga kapatid, if there are antichrist and apostates, we should be the ambassadors for Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. That is a big word, mga kapatid. I will be reading again 2 Corinthians 5.20. And I hope while we are reading this verse, meditate it, try to sink it in our hearts and soul. Try to see these red points, mga kapatid. We are ambassadors for Christ. We beg you. We beg you. On behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. That is a big word, mga kapatid. That is a big message for everybody. If you are not reconciled yet, be reconciled to God. And as an ambassador of Christ, if we are an anti-Christ, maybe not now, or maybe before, be like Christ today. Be like Christ today. If you are, uh, if you think you are upstates, be in the family of the Father. Meaning, we have to move closer and closer to the Father. Apostates mean we are departing in the fellowship. We are denying the faith. So what we will do is making in the opposite. If, if these characters, they are anti-Christ, we are the pro-Christ. We are the ambassadors for Christ. So we will do everything just to go against this antichrist. If they are the antichrist, we will do our part and go to the other side to be like Christ. To be in the family of the Father. And if you are anointed, praise be to God. And if not, if you are still on the progress, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is the most important. In our walk today, we have to make sure that we are always filled with the Holy Spirit. And as the message said, that we cannot discern which is true and which is false. We cannot discern which is right and which is wrong if we don't have that discernment spirit. And we can have that only if that Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Triune God, resides in our hearts. Mga kapatid, this is a warning. This is not just a reminder. This is a warning for everybody that there is a danger ahead of us. That there is a deception in the last hour. And this is part of the last hour. And John is telling us that we can now discern, we can now identify, we can now distinguish who are the Antichrist, who are the apostates, and us declare and proclaim that we are the anointed ones. Now we can see and we can win the victory. These Antichrist, these apostates, as in our surroundings. We can find it everywhere. We can find it in supermarkets. We can find it in the buses. We can find it in metro buses, in schools, in gymnasiums, all over the places, in your neighborhood. But God is giving us this warning ahead of us how we will overcome this and to keep our faith remain 
so that we will still firm and steadfast and continue in his pain. Church, this is a, a wake-up call to everybody. We have 23 participants now in Zoom. This is Zoom meeting. It could be 30, 35, 40 in physical. I know there are a lot more in physical. But this is way, way, very less, this quantity. Imagine, that is why John reserves the word many for Antichrist. Because if you look at the numbers, if numbers is concerned, they are everywhere. They are surrounded us. And you think 35, 40 ambassadors of Christ, what can we do in this world as what we learned from the past week? That this world is a very corrupted world. This is worldly. No? There is a, a pride of, there's pride. There is the lust of the flesh and the desires of the eyes. We cannot win, brothers and sisters, if we have this quantity alone. So that is why we are the ambassadors of Christ who commanded us to move, to go, to preach, to share, so that we can spread the true gospel. At least we can win our families, our colleagues, our neighborhood, and this is very important. And John is always, as always, since in the beginning of this series, he is encouraging us, he is affirming our faith that just be yourself, just be within what faith you have right now. We are commending you, we are affirming you that you are really Christians. And I hope these 23, 30, 40 participants, it will not be less for the coming weeks, but it should be growing and growing. Brothers and sisters, as the God said in, said in, first, in 2 Corinthians 5.20, we beg you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. I hope, brothers and sisters, uh, we have that in our hearts to to have that thirst na hindi tayo papayag na ganito lang. Ito lang yung numbers natin. We will not uh, be satisfied of what we have right now in, in numbers in spiritual we have that level no? we should strive more and more from the Lord and we can do that only if we will seek him more if we will be with him more in the fellowship of the brothers and sisters if we will continue in the faith and that is the opposite of being an apostate. Oppositing or going against these departed brothers and sisters. We have to move and move and move closer to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I hope you can feel the message of God today. And God really is begging for everybody that we have to do our part. Staying in the church, attending in the church is not enough. There should be a changed life there should be a transformed life. 
there should be a fruit. As the message said earlier, this fruit and this faith should go hand in hand. Staying in the church for long, for how many years without fruit, is a false fruit. Brothers and sisters, if you are really a children of God, if you are a saved children of God, there should be a transformed life. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We, we, we magnified you. And Lord, thank you, Lord, for giving this message for everybody. We feel your heart, O oh God. Nararamdaman namin, Panginoon, yung bigat. Nararamdaman namin, Panginoon, yung pagsamu mo. We can feel it, Lord. We can feel it, Lord. And hopefully, for the past messages, for the past weeks, until today, it will give us that, that urge, that eagerness to work hard for our faith. We don't want to hear somebody or this group of people in coming months, years to come, that they will depart in this fellowship. We don't want to see that, Lord. We don't like to see them moving away and falling away. But we want our brothers and sisters to go back fellowship again with us. Lord, as you said in your word, Lord, you're begging, oh God. And Lord, we ask your holy presence to give us that courage to do our part as you anointed us. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful message and use us, oh God, not just to hear this message today, but Lord, give us that power and boldness to share, to bring them back here in your church, to take them again in your arms and to fellowship with us, O God. Lord, maraming maraming pong salamat, Panginoon. Nawa, O oh God, ito ay talagang na-absorb ng bawat isa. Panalangin ko, O oh God, O oh Lord, na tulungan mo kami, Panginoon. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, to mapaglabanan ang trials and challenges. As you said in your word, many anti Christ are here already long before, O oh God. But praise be to God, O oh Lord. Praise to your name that we are still here, remain and stay and firm and steadfast in your faith. Thank you, Lord. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, that we are these children that you are affirming. Thank you, Lord, for that encouragement and we really Lord indeed grateful to be part of your kingdom maraming marami pong salamat Panginoon and as we close this message patuloy O oh Lord na manahan yung presence mo in us Lord live in us Dwell more in us, reside in us, so that in every decisions we are to make, for all the actions, utterance that we will make, Lord, it will be pleasing to you. It will be a blessing to others. It will be a, a, 
a life for everybody that can hear the words from us. Mabubuhay muli sila na noon ay namatay na Panginoon. Maraming maraming pong salamat Panginoon. And we will just raise our hands. We will just lift your name, O Lord. Maraming salamat. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you. And hopefully, and we pray, Lord, that you are pleased in this message. Indeed, you are magnified, O God. Maraming maraming pong salamat, Panginoon. To you, the glory. To you, the adoration. To you, the only praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you, mga kapatid.